Hi, my name is Tamara, and you are watching Things Even a Monkey Should Know. Thanks so much for watching again today. As you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, I'm not a professional at this do-it-yourself stuff. I'm just a girl who's figured out that there are a lot of things around the house and out in the yard and on the cars that I can do myself instead of paying someone else a bundle of money to do it. So I'm not going to lie, today's task is um, it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty dirty, a little time consuming, but it's completely worth it in the end. Today I'm going to show you how to use a power washer and I'm going to use it to completely clean off my decks. And if you're thinking, well, why not just get down and scrub them, you know, with a brush and soap and water? Well, that would take forever and the results would not be nearly as awesome as what I'm going to show you today. So let's get started. So as you guys are going to see, there's really not that much stuff that we need today. Um, first thing is that you need to be dressed in something that you don't mind if it gets really muddy and dirty and probably wet, even though I'm going to try to keep this as clean as possible. There's going to be stuff splattering everywhere. So um, first and foremost, uh, eye protection or face protection, and you can either get a whole face shield or goggles. I'm going to use the goggles, and I'm going to be honest, there's going to be a point at which I'm going to get tired of wiping them off with this rag here uh, and I'm probably just going to take them off but that is not recommended I'm just telling you now but I, I know how it gets whenever I'm trying to see what I'm doing and I can't uh, apparently I'd rather um, you know run the risk of gouging my eye out than um, have to deal with the goggles um, of course you're going to need to have a power washer um, I had a friend who very kindly let me borrow his um, but you can also rent them they typically run between I would say 30 and 40 dollars a day um, if you rent one on a Friday, then usually you get to keep it for the weekend for free. So that's thought too. You want to have some extra gasoline for it, depending on how much you're going to be power washing. And um, it is a little addicting. So once you start washing things and you see how, how easily you can clean stuff, then you'll start looking for more things to do. Um, you also want to have some shoes uh, that you don't mind if they get wet. So either regular shoes. I actually prefer to use rain boots. I know that's kind of funny, but um, I know some people do this in their bare feet, but uh, as we'll see in just a minute, um, with the power that's exerted from the power sprayer um, and the potential to cut off your toes, I don't really think doing it in bare feet is a very good idea. And so the last thing that you'll need, and you're going to laugh at me, and I don't care, is um, some naproxen, which is also a leave. I take two of these before I start this kind of a job because otherwise my arms get so unbelievably tired from trying to hold the sprayer and I wind up taking more breaks than I would prefer myself to do just to give my arms a rest and I know this sounds crazy but if I've taken some leave, two of them actually, then I'm able to work longer and um, it just makes things better all the way around. So I think that's all that we're going to need today. Oh, of course you're going to need your uh, deck or house or whatever it is. Um, we're going to be going over decks today, um, but you'll need whatever it is that you're going to be spraying. So um, I'll show you next how to use the power washer. So um, a few things that I think are really important to know prior to starting this thing up or doing anything with it is um, about the different tips or ends that you can put onto the end of your pressure washer gun. Um, so depending on which one you use, that is how hard of a spray you're going to get. And from what I've seen, these seems to, seem to be pretty universal no matter what brand you get. Um, make sure that if you rent or borrow that you uh, get a full education on these tips if you're not clear with them because, for example, uh, well, the red tip, um, it does the hardest spray. And I know that you're thinking this is only water, but you know how if you go to a car wash, a do-it-yourself car wash, that's, that's essentially a power sprayer that you're using, but they're using the appropriate tip or the appropriate strength for a car so that it doesn't knock all the paint off your car because you would be really ticked off. Um, so whenever you have like the strongest stream or the strongest spray, it's going to be this red one. And if you can see this little hole here, it's very tiny. So basically this is shooting a stream, just a direct stream. There's no fan to what it does at all. And so this is something that you might use, say, to dig a hole with. Uh, if you're wanting to write your name in a piece of wood, that would do it. Um, it you would not want to spray this on windows. Um, you really wouldn't want to spray it on any paint. It's going to take off paint. It's going to break windows. It's going to be generally very destructive. Probably something that you won't use very often. 
um, you could also definitely cut your toe off with that one, so gross. Um, the yellow tip is gonna be a little bit gentler, but again, with, with a power sprayer, you never ever wanna put a body part in front of any of these sprayers because it is either going to maim you or thoroughly hurt you and bruise you and make you in general miserable. So make sure that whenever you're doing this that you keep yourself, your kids, your friends, your pets, anything alive out of the way of the, the spray. So the yellow one is gonna be a little bit gentler than the red. It's still gonna be a pretty tough spray because it doesn't have much of a fan to it, but do you understand the more the water is spread by these tips, the, um, the less likely it is to take off paint or damage things. So we go down the line and we have the green one and the black one, which put out the same fan essentially, but the black one is made to use with a siphon so that you can siphon up uh, um, soap or bleach or whatever. We're not gonna be using that one today. The white is the gentlest, um, so now you just have an idea. The green one is the one that we're actually gonna be using today because we do want it to be able to take off the junk off of our wood and it's pretty impressive um, actually the way that this can clean. But uh, again, you still do not wanna put anything in front of this because as I've said, I think a whole quite a few times before, as humans, we are really squishable and really damageable. And even though that this is just water, it is high powered water. And I'm sure you guys know that water these days is used to cut metal and it's used to cut all kinds of things. So you can actually do quite a lot of damage with it. So just keep that in mind. So I'm not gonna go over in real specific detail about how to get this started and everything because each one is gonna be a little bit different, but there are a few things that'll be common across all of them. Of course, there's gonna be uh, where you connect the hose that the um, spray gun is gonna be connected to. There's gonna be the place where you connect the water hose. And this is just a regular hose connection. The others are quick connects connections uh -huh. um, and they're all probably going to leak just a little bit whenever you let them go and it's very important um, before you start the motor or anything uh, or the engine rather it's very important to go ahead and turn the water on so that you have some water flowing through here you get all the air bubbles out of the hoses you also get water flowing through the pump which needs that water to stay cool if you start up the engine without having water already in the pump there's a good chance that you might burn up the pump so let's turn that on so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna connect the gun because it looks like most of the air is probably out again it's just a quick connect and so the air is out and so you can go ahead and you can just spray the gun just a little bit to make sure that all the air is out of everything and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put the uh the tip that we're going to be using I'm gonna actually, I wanna show you the destruction of the red tip before I do anything else. So as you guys can see, you're a little bit away, away from where I'm gonna be doing this, uh, this little test to show you what the red tip does, just so that you have an idea of the power of this. Um, and that's because I don't want to get my camera soaking wet. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine. So that was a whopping like two seconds worth of spraying. And I hope you can see here the hole I just dug and um, what was actually a brand new board. So that is the kind of destruction <laughs> that these things can do, which can be good and helpful in some cases, but um, this is why we're not using the red tip for cleaning our deck. Um, and again, the green one can do the same thing. You just have to keep it on there a lot longer. So we actually are gonna have time to get things clean rather than just destroy them. Okay, so one last thing before we actually start working on this entire thing and get everything clean and looking brand new again. Um, as you can see, I have my green tip back onto my, um, my spray gun here. And uh, whenever you are making, um, whenever you're doing your cleaning, as opposed to doing really short strokes across 
your uh, wood pieces, you want to do long sweeping strokes. Um, and the reason for this is that if you do short strokes, then you're going to see every single little stroke that you took. And there's going to be a pattern of that. Whereas if you do broad sweeping strokes, then you're not going to see the, you know, you're not going to see a pattern at all. Um, another thing is that you always want to go with the grain of the wood. Um, if you go uh, like vertically or at a 90 degree angle to it, you're a lot more likely to tear up the wood um, in the process of cleaning it. Whereas if you stay with the grain, then as long as you don't stay in one spot too long, then you have a pretty good chance of not tearing anything up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start this up just so I can show you, um, you know, just as an example, what I'm talking about here. And then I'm going to uh, get with the program. This was the one that I did the really short strokes on, and that's the, the inclination to do that in the beginning whenever you're first um, doing this power washing. But it'll look a lot better if you do it like the step below, which was the, um, the broad strokes. So it's just something to keep in mind and to uh, do the best you can. So that it, those are all my tips. So um, now let's get started on this, and it's going to look to you like it took me about 30 seconds, but it's going to take me more like a few hours. But I will try to keep track of my time just so that you have a little bit of an idea how long you can expect to take. going to say did you see how awesomely easy that was because while it was not a hard thing to do it did take a little while and I guess in the beginning I should have said one of the other things you needed was a whole lot of patience but really and truly I mean this was a lot of space to do and it was also very dirty and um, it hadn't been done in at least five years I know that much and um, it took me it wound up taking me three hours almost exactly to do it which really doesn't seem that bad to me and again you know three hours every five years I should probably do it a little more often than that but I actually didn't wind up getting all that dirty um, not as bad as I expected not like last week here's a photo of what happened to me um, or I guess the other day whenever I was doing the front of the house pretty gross um, so <laughs> evidently you don't have to get that dirty either um, but, you know, it really wasn't all that bad, and um, pressure washing makes a huge difference in your deck, and, um, you know, mine was getting to the point that it had so much lichen and moss on it that it was getting slippery, so if it rained, I kind of had to put up a do not enter sign because I didn't want anybody sliding on their butt or falling off of it. Um, and, you know, another reason, along with that sort of safety reason um, for pressure washing, um, is also because at this point now, um, if you wanted to refinish your deck or add a sealer or uh, a stain or anything like that, this is the time when you do that. It's completely clean. And the only thing is you have to wait for it to dry out. It did start to rain on me there at the end. And so all of the wetness on, on here right now is not from the washing that I did. Um, but, you know, you, you need to let it dry out pretty well, and then you need to have a period when you're not supposed to get rain for 
at least 24 hours. Um, it's usually 24 hours on most of the stains and the sealants, just so that they have time to penetrate the wood and really soak in, you know, and um, otherwise you put them on and rain comes two hours later, it's just gonna wash it all off. So if you uh, didn't think that you could pressure wash, well, if I can do it and if I can do this much space, you can certainly do it, I promise. But as always, if you don't feel comfortable doing something like that yourself, you can always call a professional or if you get in a bind, you can also call a professional or call a friend who knows how to do it too. Um, friends are often very eager to help. Um, I think that's all I have to say today. This gave me a good idea for maybe our next week segment. We may be pressure washing the house, which is a little bit different than doing the deck. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. Definitely not going to do it in the next few days. It's supposed to rain here a lot again. So until then, thanks very much for watching. Thank you to everybody who's already subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. I really appreciate it. And uh, until next week, have a great week.